Welcome to this talk about DevRa inside corporate roles. My name is Ana Jimenez and today I'm with Manrique. Hi, this is Manrique Lopez from Vitalia. And um, the main objective of, of this talk is, is to show the, the value that a DevRa can have for inner source existence. So let's get started. Okay, yeah. we are here to talk about DevRel inside corporate walls and the value for inner source ecosystems. Yeah, uh, so the first question you might ask is, what's a DevRel? Hmm. Let me think, let me think. How I see people, my friends that are working on DevRel, how I see them, I usually think, are uh, those the folks speaking at events and giving stickers? Is just that? I'm afraid no. <laughs> Uh, actually, that's a really common answer for people that is not familiar with DevRel's developer relations because it's actually the most visible part of them, but obviously it's not all about. Uh, in fact, they're having a multitask role. They, they need to uh, be aware of a lot of tasks related not only uh, for, with our great activities, also with community activities, product, and education and support. So tasks more based on developer marketing, but also based on community, based on the product they are trying to, to spread the world, and also education and support. So if you want to get more knowledge of that, I really encourage you to take a look to the article called the four pillars of developer relations. The link is right on the slides. It's an article uh, published by my friends at Hoopy. And yeah, it's, I think it covers uh, a lot of really interesting things for know what the world does. Yeah, and that, that explains, of course, that of course people working on DevRel are speaking at events because it's part of the outreach task. But also they are running hackathons and that explains okay how they are helping developers to be aware of the technology they are trying to spread. They also teach or help people to okay how I start with this and hackathons are a good tool to, to, to do this. But also there are other things that they are also doing as part of this that is for example when we are going to these hackathons and conferences or, 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 or things, basically they are talking with developers about how how people are using the tool. So they are getting feedback about the tooling or the technology. So they can go back to the companies and, uh, and explain them some kind of advocacy about how the product or even the marketing or the documentation can be improved and how they can help developers to keep engaged with the product and the technology. Uh, and ready with that, of course, they also have been not only on these events and hackathons and technology team, but also API. APIs are, are becoming one of the key pieces for using products and technology. So they are helping to improve the documentation, also creating code examples to help people to start with the technology. So again, that means that there are different kind of skills and mindsets in the same team. And there are a lot of tools, a lot of tasks related with, with the things they are doing. Right. Um... And if you take a look at this uh, task, that are not all of them, but some of them, in fact, it's everything, it's about building communities. So you can build offline communities, but also online communities. And I think right now, uh, given the situation we are facing, it's really, really important. <laughs> Yeah, I'm wondering by the photo if, if the toilet paper is the future swag for online conference because I love stickers, so please don't tell me that. <laughs> I actually, right now, I I will go for that swag, like <laughs> toilet paper swag, really. <laughs> so, so, how do we build these communities? That's a really good question. And in fact, Mary Tango, um she was uh, expecting to be here with that, but at the end, she couldn't make it. But she talks uh, about this um, this idea of developer relations, the ones that actually can uh, be in charge of building communities, building tech communities. 
I sending you the, the link. So that's a, a video talk she made and explains really, really well this, this concept, like how developer relations are the ones that can, can do that task. Yeah, and according to Mary, we miss you, Mary. Uh, and that talk is basically if DevRel is a team in your company whose main focus is the community you are trying to collaborate with and the product or product you are trying to get developers contribute to. So, yeah. so uh, actually, this is really um, similar to what inner source is trying to achieve. But you don't see that clear. Let's let's inner source this this idea that there was uh, the dimension of there was is. So a team in your company whose main focus is the inner source program you're doing, and the internal problem projects, the different internal projects you're trying to get developers contribute to. So that that's that so familiar? Yeah, actually yeah. that's one of the main topics. Uh, that devil that inner source is trying to get to try to um, get developers to contribute to those internal projects for your inner source program. So now the question that applies to me is basically how do we build an inner source community? But there are actually very different ways, but um, there are three main. Um, things, important things to, to be aware of. So improve asynchronous remote collaboration, create code environments, and also engage in the developers. And not only in one, two channels, but across the different channels where those internal developers, your developers from your company uh, might be at. So at the end of the day, we are talking about people and it's all about the people and connecting with people, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so there's one question I, I have, right? So how, how do we um, profile those people? Because how do we profile those developers? Well, that, that's a very good question and you explained it very well in DevRelCon London in the last conference they did in London about the we use this chart, so I'm going to use reuse it for explaining to the people attending to the you know, Source Common Summit. Um, basically, the idea of when we are talking about developers is we have different profiles of developers when they are coming to technology through DevRel. So, this again is our own idea, but there are some people working in similar ideas like that. We have people that are users. Uh, we call them most valuable users, not because they are only downloading the technology or, or checking or pulling the, the the code you are using is because they are taking the time to ask questions. I mean, you got, they go to the GitHub repository, they go to the GitLab repository and start asking, okay, how this works? I have seen this issue, I have seen the other one. That would be one type of, of people contributing to the project. The other people could be just contributors, and we call them contributors as the people that is not only taking time to uh, provide those questions, but also to answer them. So they have some kind of knowledge about the technology already. So they are more engaged with the technology. They have more knowledge. They're already on board at some point, but they are not still submitting code and accepted that code. Probably they are submitting some assets, but they are still under review and they are perceived, okay, thank you very much for coming, but they are not still a maintainer of the projects. And then we have the maintainer, the people that actually is doing the code that initially could be a small team, but it could grow over time to become not only the people that started the project, but the contributors that had raised some level of knowledge that, okay, I can write part of the main code here. So that, that was it. So, so what do you think? Uh, so then can software development analytics help here? Well, definitely. And, you know, we, we are from Viteria. We are doing, been doing software development analytics for a long time. And usually people see this thing about counting things, how, how people are being active or not, how many contributions they are having, but we are, we are here we are talking about people. So I draw a little mock-up of an idea of how we can show the people, the active people. I don't care how much active they are. It's like the idea of, okay, this is a prototype of an idea I've done with Cauldron. 
Kotlin.io is an open source tool, SaaS solution we have released recently, but the idea is, okay, you can build your own report. And I've been doing with this idea recently. So if we go to the next slide, I think it's where the one you can basically said how things Ooh. are changing. The idea is we are seeing 15 years of open source software development by Unity, the gaming company and 3D company. So this is a lot of activity. But you can see things like, okay, when they have open meetups, and then you can see observers. That is a new category we are thinking about. It's people that is aware of the technology, but probably not yet using it. And then they start using it because they are becoming users. So our goal here when we came to one of the goals here when we came to the inner source common was this idea of would be interesting to have some kind of CRM where the C stands for community, not for customers, because we want people to become contributors and maintainers of the technology we are using internally. This kind of tooling, I think, would be interesting, and I would love to know your feedback and your questions about this. Well, that's very interesting. I think it's really, really useful. Uh, well, this is some story about Vitergio. We use uh, the view the slide, so you, if you just want to uh, check. And that's all. Thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, we will leave us our email and our Twitter. Just uh, as a reminder, you can share all this um, all this talk and and all these the different slides is completely free. And yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.